Hi folks, I'm Bob Schroep, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We're the most famous physical therapist on the internet. Of course, in our opinion, of course, Bob. Brad, we're gonna talk about sciatic pain exercises that will work for you. Now, we're talking about two different types of sciatica, at least two, maybe we'll go to three. We'll sure. see how much time we have. And uh, we're gonna, you really, depending on what type you have, you really need to take different approaches. Right, and that's what we're here. You know, we're, we're taking, together we've got over 55 years of therapy experience and we're just taking all that from our knowledge history. I have to add it up, but I think we might be more than that. Yeah. We might be pushing on that 60 year marker. Yeah, now. well, we, we don't even want to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we, we're going to educate you on how to kind of self diagnose so that you use the proper exercise that are going to work. Give you some things you can try right. Right? and see if one works for you and if it doesn't, you know, maybe try the other opposite <laughs> method. So. And by the way, if you are new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on a stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload every day. Mm -hmm. Also, go over to Facebook and like us because Brad and I, as children. Oh, Bob, do we you have yeah. to keep going back to this? We were not liked, Just and now like we're trying to turn things around. Book. Okay. Let's start off with the first category. Okay, here, Brad. so sciatica. Let's just go to the basics. It means you got some back pain that radiates down one leg, and it can go usually past the knee, down into the calf, the ankle, and the foot. You could get pain, numbness, tingling, right. uh, and even weakness at the you know if things are really getting bad. Right. Right now, I have a patient. Um, he is, goes right down to his calf, right here, it's specific, and then his toes. Three of his toes are, are very numb. And we're, we're having some success with getting rid of that. We're having a little problem, but with uh, this is exactly the same mindset that I use when I work. There's with always the problems. Yeah. I mean, it, it usually doesn't go smooth. Right, but so, that's why we've got options right, to work that's with. That's why we got options. Okay, so if you're in a situation that your leg symptoms, whatever they may be, numbness, tingling, burning, etc., if they commonly get worse with sitting, or when you get up from a chair, it's kind of hard to straighten up, but once you get moving, it improves. Or if bending over, if those three things increase your symptoms and pain down the leg, and walking usually feels a little bit better, right. then we're gonna give you five options of exercise that these are the ones you're gonna to wanna to try if that's what you're feeling. Right. So yeah, and, and, and generally if, if it is worse, you know, in 80% of the cases, this is going to help if, if it's if, if bending forward makes it worse. Right. So. so the first thing, if walking typically feels good, that's the first thing is get out and walk more. Make sure you walk on the flat. Don't walk up and down hills or a road that's crowned. Make sure it's flat. That's going to be the best thing for right. it. Right. And don't walk beyond, uh, you know, the point where it starts hurting. I mean, right. I, I, you know, I could be a little troublesome if you get out so far and you can't get you back. You got it, yeah, make sure maybe you yeah. could call your wife or family member, <laughs> they can come pick you up with a car if you're two miles out. So you, you usually walk around the block or something right. where you're close to home. Something manageable, but mm -hmm. it, the walking really is good for your back. It, it almost always is good for your back um, uh, unless it's making your pain worse. Right, and so. we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Right. Okay, Bob, should we go to the golden sure. gold standard exercise? All right, you're gonna wanna start with you know, again, the problem has been bending forward, so the solution is bending in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we start off with, sometimes people can't even lay like this, can they, Brad? Right. Sometimes that. they have to start with a pillow underneath them. Right. Um, and that's all right. I, won't, I don't need to show that right now. Okay. But hopefully, you, if you can lay without the pillow, you may want to lay here for a few minutes and sometimes even get up on the elbow right. for a few minutes. Right. The, the, the gentleman I worked with yesterday, he would be in this exact position and his leg symptoms in the calf and the toe back to normal. Wonderful. With, within a minute. Wow. And it was like, it was that, that it easy. It was just that. Right. All right, then you want to progress to get a little more aggressive. You want to start putting the, your hands underneath your shoulders and you're going to start pressing up. Ah, yeah. The key to this is that you're keeping the pelvis on the bed. You're not right lifting the pelvis up like this. If your back is really tight, which often it is in sciatica, because uh, you haven't been bending in this direction, you may only be able to go this high to start. And this is exactly the case with this gentleman, my patient I have now. Yeah, he can't even, he gets about, go ahead, this high, and then his whole pelvis comes up. So we're working sure. on that. So one thing to do is, you know, is just gently start stretching it more right. and more. But the other thing is to actually take a strap, or you can take a rolled sheet. Um, we like our yoga strap here, don't we, Brad? Yeah, that's a nice product. So what's nice about this, it's got the loops. You can get... Put your hands in the loops and be comfortable. I was using this this morning, Brad. Sure. To stretch my hamstrings. 
and I could relax and so I was trying to wake up. So you can see here, now I can give a little overpressure yep. and it can help stretch it more. And if you want to work your way up on the loops, you can go like this and stretch it even more. And I can keep going up the ladder here, Brad, and still stretch it even more now. There you go. So, that doesn't contrast well with my shirt, does it? Well, the red's okay. I've been flipping it. Oh, you so flipped it around. Yeah, okay, well, it. I'm helping you out, Bob. This actually feels really good. I know it. I can All see right. you're really getting some stretch. What's the next step, Brad? Because I know there's some variations here we're going to show, right? Right. Well, actually, uh, there's a, well, yeah, you just stay there. There's one in the middle here I'm going to throw at. Um, I always have people just try quickly. Is some self traction. Oh, sure. Oh, boy, is that just it, nice on the ears when that <laughs> chair squeaks. So, at home, if you can get a couple chairs or a countertop and just go between here and gently lift yourself up, trying to keep your core relaxed. So, we're going to use the weight of our legs as traction in our low spine to help separate the get the gap where that nerve is coming out to make a take that stress off of there and get rid of the symptoms. Now, if this is going to work, it typically works as soon as you start taking weight off like there, it's like, oh, that feels good. So he can kind of even just kind of lean forward a little bit, put his weight on his toes. Right. So he's saying, and I'm not going to do this because I'm too tight in the stomach. We just want to stay relaxed here, lean forward and gently take the weight off of the earth. If feet. this works, this is something, and by with, with all these, this is something you can do every hour. Sure. I mean, that, we're yep. not saying you will do it every hour, but that's how often you can right. do it. So you can do it five times right. a day, four times a day. And this one, you're going to know it right away. Now, the gentleman I work with and I'm working with, this one does not work for him it at doesn't. all. It doesn't. But it's okay because your other ones work great. Right. Uh, but I that's what it, it is. It's, it's, it's an experiment quite often where right. we got our crazy lab going here. So, all okay. right, next one, Brad. Oh, on your back, this is a rotation. On my back. Yep. Okay. This, is, this one's gotten me out of trouble a number of times with patients where the prone press ups aren't working. Sure. I've been shifting them. And uh, can you come over this way sure. a little bit, Bob? All right. So you bring the knees up like this. Now, this, with a patient, you do it on a table. But if you're doing this by yourself, you're going to do it on a carpeted floor because you don't want to fall off. And we're just going to rotate this way. <laughs> And back. You know this one, Bob. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you, generally, you what, your... generally what you want to do is go to the painful side first. Right, exactly. Because if the, the pain is going down this leg, you want to bring it up and go this way. And what it, and what it does, it actually opens the, the, the little hole that the nerve comes out. Yeah, the foramen we like uh, to call it. I didn't want to use it. I wanted to use a layman's term. Sure. Right? <laughs> and... and, uh, and it can actually gap it and give you some relief. Sure. So one thing I, I do is I uh, I'll have the patient lift up your butt a little bit and shift away. If you're going to go to the right, there you go. Sure. And, and then you go, it, yep. And it, so you're already kind of in that motion. Right. It just so, helps. It's one of those yeah. little tricks. Mm -hmm. Sure. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And then, of course, the roadkill. The roadkill. And why they call this roadkill, I'm not really sure. And but uh, you can call it whatever you'd like. So again, it would be the painful side, right? Yep. So, so if we're going to assume the painful side is my right side. The right leg. You so bet. I'm going to bring the leg out like this. Sure. And you can actually put the foot touching the, the opposite knee. Right. So it looks kind of it's like a figure four looking down from the top. Now, typically, if this one works, as soon as you put the leg up there, things start feeling better. Okay. And then you can add the press ups with this. Yeah. And, and sometimes, as a variation of that, sometimes people just take a towel. Yeah. You, you were thinking of what I was. Yep. Boy, we've been working together a long time, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. So he puts a towel just underneath my pelvis here. Right. And, and, and you can try that without the roadkill. Right. And quite often that'll do it. Sure. Another one, just real quickly, Brad, is you can shift well, your This is hips. a bonus. Yep. You can shift your hips away from the pain. Yeah. So I'm making a banana. Show, show the banana, yeah. Yep. So if you're looking down from the top, the right leg is a painful, so you're going to shift just Over. the hips, yep. and, it, and then you do the press up with that shift in there. So basically, we have this big bag of tricks, and we keep pulling them out to find out which one's going to work. Right. So. Now, this, if you find yourself, normally you're like this, and you're kind of hurting it, and you can't straighten up, and you feel like you're walking crooked like this, then if your shoulders are shifted to the left, you're going to take your left shoulder and bend your arm to the go right. Go to the right wall. Angle. This arm I'm going to bend 
I'm going to hike that shoulder he's up a little bit. Like a right angle like this. Yep. And he's, he's putting it right here. Yep, because I'm shifted here, and I'm going to actually make the shift go away gently. I'm going to press in here and straighten my back, and I'm just going to do that gently. And over periods of about five to ten repetitions, now you're only going to do this as, as you're doing it, you're getting straighter, and the leg pain feels, feels better. better. Right, exactly, Rob. The whole thing about it is you if you have this body shift, you have to do this, or you're sciatica won't get better it won't get better with any of these things right you know what you need to get yeah, straight you, up and down shifted, first you have to get straight right. first so after doing these then you'd, you'd feel like you're back up in line you may again. be doing this for a couple days right um, yeah and you're going to do right. it gently and so, and uh, be careful with it and you'll do fine all right let's talk about the other situation brad where you actually have pain down the leg a lot of times more often in this case i think the pain is often down both legs um, we're talking about the other type of sciatica, right? Right, right. Um, um, and it often goes down to just the knee. It doesn't go down further, I, the ones I've seen anyway. What's, and well, I, stenosis? I, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't agree with that, but that's all right. Either way, it's the same treatment. I agree with that. Anyway, so. <laughs> well, it's just in my experience. Yeah. So, and we'll talk about the symptoms, Brad. The well, symptoms. whether it's down both legs or one, but either way, standing in one spot usually starts to irritate the back and the leg pain walking, and if you find yourself with a grocery cart and you lean forward, it feels better. Yeah, they actually call it grocery cart syndrome. Sure. And that, that's a really big sign. Is right. If you lean forward, it feels better when you're walking. Right. Or um, when you're standing and you're walking and that leg is bothering your both legs, and if you sit, sit down, down and it consistently improves, as soon as you sit, it's like, oh, man, the, the symptoms come out of the leg. And, than what we were just describing. Yeah. And you're doing the opposite things, actually. You right. actually don't want to bend the back in the other direction. Right, and this is a much simpler protocol, yeah. isn't it, Yeah, Bob? we got just three exercises yep. we're going to show. So you want me to show? Go ahead. You've All been right. doing a good job, Bob. All right, so you're doing uh, single knee to chest first. So I'd, I'd probably start if you're having pain down one leg or down both legs. Right. Either way, you start with one leg like this. I'm going to give a little bit of stretch here. Start, you know, pressure on, pressure off. Pressure on, it, pressure off. Th these should feel good. Yep, and these should feel good. Right, should it should be, feel like a yep. nice, healthy stretch. It's so then we're going to go ahead and bring, now you can also do it on this leg, stretch it. Right. Then you're going to stretch both by bringing one up first and then bring the other one up. Right. And then go ahead and stretch like this. Now, if this is difficult for you to do, you might again have to take a sheet or a rolled towel underneath it, or um, you can again take the yoga strap and you can go underneath like this. Right. And this works out really good because you get into the loops. This yeah. is for for people, you know, if you're a, a rounder person, yep. you you don't have you have shorter arms, you can't reach your your knees. It's 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 not uncommon. So now you can do pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. Right. All right. Then hook line rotation. Yep. Now this is a little different than the one we showed you before. The one we showed you before, you actually. Whoa, my mic's way down here, Brad. Oh my gosh, Bob. They Testing. <laughs> I'll get your attention. Uh, in, the, in this one, before we brought it up and went over, right. and this time we keep the heels down. Right here. And it, I, I call this the windshield wiper yeah. because you just go back and forth like windshield wiper. And uh, you're going to just go gently. If going one direction is uncomfortable, avoid that direction. Go on the pain freeway. And typically the other way will loosen up with time. Again, to 10 exactly. to 20 reps of these is a good, good. This is a good one to do out of bed in the morning or anytime you know you lay down. And take yeah, a nap. you wake up real quick with that. So, all right, the last one, Brad, is kind of your deal, isn't it? Yeah, this is one because I do have some stenosis in my back, and it typically goes down one leg, and my left one, I put I put my leg up on a step at home or on a chair, but I usually use a step, and I'll just go like this, and I'll stretch, and I'm really flexing that out. And it just feels like a good stretch, and it makes that, that leg feel better quite rapidly. Um, so you can try that one. So as you well. like it a lot, like when you're out and about, like watching an event or something like that. Like right. If yeah. You're, you're yeah. If I'm at a you watching know, a track event, right? Then still, I'll go up to the bleachers. Bleachers. And I'll, yeah. Yep, stretch it out like that. So it's a good one, a good little tool, in the tool chest there to try. So. All right, Brad. Well, we better wrap it up here. We're way yeah, over time. I didn't so. realize that. Bob. So the way time flies. Thanks for watching.